So yeah, we're gonna get the wire set up in the vise. I always put the stitching on my leathers on the side so that they actually sit in the rig with the stitching facing down. And I think that's the best waterproofing. And I don't find that the stitching chafes it all that way. It keeps it clear of anything and it looks the cleanest because you just see the leather on the outside. When you're doing a soft eye, you need something to sort of form that shape of the eye. I have this thimble that I use. You just want to make sure it's something that's not going to scar up the leather. Here's a thimble spliced in exactly the same way. The only difference is it's got a thimble in it. So you can just see how it enters. Same splice, just a slightly different application. And so, so we're... I think ready to go here. I'll grab a couple tools. So I'll get that, get a couple spikes. But I'll get this set up in here. And I just got it sort of pinched and I just jam it up like that. And I get the thimble in sort of roughly where I want it. What I want is for these, you know, this is where we're gonna start splicing. And I want those to tighten up together sort of just above the jaws of the vise. So it's sort of a, you know, balancing act when you're first getting it in here to get it in the right spot, more or less like that. Yeah, so that's pretty good. That's fine. The working end uh, on the left, standing parts over here on the right, uh, and we're going to splice this in to that, like that. And the way I set this up, I actually have a clamp here that gets hooked up out of the way, like that. Do the Chinese fingers on here to tie this up. So we just go back on here. So I do some turns like that, and then I get this tied on my hook here. It's funny when I have to think about it. I always just do it without thinking. I just do a couple turns and a little locked hitch there and that locks on there under my hook. And uh, I mean anything that works for you, you know, that's just what I do. You want this basically to be coming straight up and down out of the vise. It's sort of a drag if it's leaning backwards or forwards too much. And um, then again I'll just tighten that up. It doesn't need to be super super tight but it needs to be snuggish. And uh, I just pull this through and lock that in like that. And that works for me. This is this is what we're going to do right here. This is a little diagram of the order of the tucks and the way the entrance works. And it definitely is hopelessly confusing to look at, but it's a handy reference. Um, and so this is just the way that I do it. And what you'll see, it, the, the strands are all numbered and then the order of tucks are laid out here. And just this on its own probably isn't particularly useful, but hopefully as a tool, along with a bunch of trial and error, will get you in the right place. You know, it took me a long time to get comfortable knowing where the strands are in the wire as you get to go home, especially because when it's in the vise, everything is the same color and nothing is numbered. And so <laughs> it'll take some time to get used to it. But eventually you'll kind of get to see this, where the wires are coming together in the vise, and it will make sense. And a pair of safety glasses is sort of essential uh, for doing this work because when we open up this wire, the wire ends are all going to be sticking up and you can't see them. The number of times I've been whacked in the face and in the eye, in particular, with a wire end that I didn't quite see uh, many times. So safety glasses uh, are crucial. These ones are already getting all scratched up. These are brand new. So this 5 16th wire I'm going to splice with this spike. And I always try to splice with as small a spike as is possible because I think it disturbs the wire less. That's because the more you distort or tweak the wire, uh, that's gonna weaken it. So you're trying to get the most, the smoothest, most gentle uh, transition that you can get. So we'll just open this up and talk a little bit about then about how, it, how it's gonna marry. But you can get a sense of the construction here right now as I get this open. Um, I'll just get these strands out of here. You know, it's six wires around a core, which is the, uh, hence the seven by seven name. And the core you can see is a little different. These wires on the outside are called preformed, and they actually sort of have that shape uh, formed into them, so they stay that way. So it's kind of convenient. You can see you can actually just twist the wire back up and it goes right back together, or you can untwist it like that. So we'll open this up like this, open it right down into here. The whole thing comes down to the entrance of the splice and getting things in nice and evenly. And so you want to pay a little attention to how it starts here. This is actually called a board of trade splice or a locking tuck splice. It's a little different than the Liverpool splice that is the most common thing. And it's just the way that the strands enter. Once they're in, everything is the same. So what I want to do when I pick is the first one is the, the lower one in front that goes across. So these two are going to lead across nice and that's going to bring the entry of the splice right there. These two are going to be the middle two, and then we've got these two in the back. 
But what I'm going to do is actually untwist the wire a little bit uh, to help me get the spike in and everything. So this is just an unlaying stick. There's different ways of doing this, but in here this works pretty well. I just jam this stick in, and I'm just going to take this back. I'm just going to take it back a little bit right now, about a half a turn. It doesn't have much load on it. But you can see when we start to stick the spike in there, how much fight the wire is going to give. And you're just trying to get a balance of how much the wire is twisting and hopefully you know you're not fighting it too hard. So this is going to be my first strand and this one is going to go underneath two and it's going to go with the lay of the wire. So I'm going to pick up, I think it's these two, and I'm going to, I just get my spike, see with the spike entered nice and easy like that because I had it opened up. Um, and I'm just going to roll this down and see that I'm in the right spot. No, I picked up the wrong, I picked up two up. So I'm going to pick up these two instead. And I always enter uh, with the wire. It's not very flexible. I mean, it's flexible, but it's not like a piece of rope. So you got to enter your tuck usually about one turn up. And what you do is you get the tuck through, and you go through, and it kind of locks in there. And then you can run it down with the spike. And hopefully it have ended up in the right spot. So that is very good. And then once it's down, you just hold it back and roll the spike back up and that locks the tuck in there. If you find yourself really fighting and, and working the wire back and forth, you're gonna make a weak splice. And especially with a stainless, because of the way it work hardens, you don't, you can't do a lot of that. So you gotta just get it in there and get it right. So that was the first one. Now I'm gonna pick up the next one over and do the two. Now these, these first two happen to be the easiest two. That's the one. You can always run the spike down to see if you're under the right strand. That's my strand right there and I'm in the right spot. So I'm doing the right thing. So that goes through like that. It's You definitely want to check and make sure you're going the right place because it's a real drag to take them back out. You know, it's the kind of thing you want to do at once and it's going to fall into place. So that one goes in. You can, I just run the spike down and I pull this whack like that and I get that where I want and then I roll the spike home like that. Now if you come over here on the front, you can see this was our first strand that we did right here and it actually went under two wires, these two right here. And you can see from the front of the splice it just runs right through nice and sweet right through. The second one just came and just went under this wire. So those two were done and what we're going to do now is shift over to the after two. Now these ones are a little more tricky because they go through, in this splice they go through against the lay. In the Liverpool splice all the tucks enter under with the lay, uh, but this is uh, is a little different. I think it's actually a little better because it's a little more even. But So I'm going to pick these up and I'm going to pick up two the first time. It's going to be these two. Um, and I'm going to run this up and I'm going to get this in here backwards. So this requires a little bit more finesse. Uh, I'm coming around. Just a, another point, I always enter the spike uh, facing down like this. Um, and I always, you know, run my tucks underneath the spike because then the spike can help push them down. But I get it in there like that and it's just going to go and it's going to kind of tweak in there like that. And then again, the same motion, you're going to push it in there and push it down to where it wants to be. It doesn't want to be jam jam down in there, but it needs to be down. And then I'm just going to run the spike back out and that's going to get me three tucks. Now I'm going to do one more here. And I get that down in there like that. Pretty much wants to go right there. So that's looking pretty good. And it really is it's all about the entrance, this first set of tucks. If you get this right, then you're good. What we gotta do right now is deal with the core. And the core is a little different because it doesn't get tucked underneath the strands. It really just sort of gets buried in there. You can see how it's not preformed, it's a little different. Some people actually just cut it right off. Um, I like to run it up a little ways to sort of provide a little body in the splice uh, because essentially what you're doing once you're in there is is making a piece of wire that's got double the amount of strands. The, the tucks, it's not like a rope splice, the tucks once we start end up going with the lay around and around so they're just wrapping around the same strands and if you do it nice it just looks like a piece of wire that's twice as big. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually jam this inside in the middle if I can and I'm going to jam it over one more. This in behind the spike, if I can, it doesn't always want to go. Um, you know, like that. Sometimes I'll pick up two, get that in there. And the spike should just be kind of pushing it in. Yep, there we go. So I only push it up a very little bit, like that. It, actually, if it falls back out, I don't even really care. Um, but that's where I want it in there. And then what I do is I actually wrap this around just to sort of keep it in place. As I tuck the splice, once the entrance is done, I'll make sure this doesn't get pushed up too far because if it gets pushed 
up too far, it can actually sort of displace the other core, which is another thing that you don't want to do. So we've got two left, and this one, I guess I'd call this number five. Without a drawing, it's kind of hard to see. There's only one strand left in here that hasn't been tucked under yet, and it's going to take both of these strands, but they're going to go in opposite directions. So this one is going to go right up under here. This one's going to come and go back the other way. So I'm going to pick this up right here, get this in here like that. Now this one is fairly easy. Usually it just sort of goes in there. Like that, come around, run that down in there like that. And then this one is a little more of a doozy. This one comes around and goes on top. So we're coming back under this way and that one goes in. And at this point I come back and I'll give myself, you know, tap things around a little bit if it looks like it needs a little of this or a little of that. But everything's in there nice and even. And one thing, one indication that things are going well is that if you look down at these, you know, they're all sort of fanning out the same way. If they're all squirrely and going crazy, or if you've had a lot of trouble getting them in there, but they're not going to look like that. And, uh, and that's going to be a problem, because what this is, these are all set up now nicely to tuck uh, as we start running up the body of this place. Once you've gotten that done, you're in pretty good shape, but we've got to finish things off. So um, I end up just going back and starting with the one that I started with. Uh, I call it strand number one, but uh, right there, and we're just going to tuck this up. And I tuck and taper at the same time. And because these strands are getting tucked around and around and around the same strand, you can do all the tucks at once with the spike in in one place. Uh, so it makes it go uh, fairly quick. Um, so we just got to pick up the right strand first. And what I'm going to do is just put another half a turn on my unlaying stick right here. I don't like to use too much stick because you're just trying to disturb the wire as little as possible. Yeah, this is our man right here, which should be this guy. And so the trick with the splice, the tucks, is to get the wire to actually untwist a little bit as it goes around. And if you do that, we'll pull this through, and we'll see how this tuck lays down here. If you come right there, see that? Now that's kind of undone and laid down in there like that. It's sort of untwisted. That's nice. That's what it wants to do. And so we'll pull this back, and we can just keep going with this. And what I do is actually, yep, this, this is going really nice. If you get it going in the right direction, in general, it sort of stays that way. You don't want the tuck down too tight. What I do is I'll do four tucks with the first one, and then taper it, then do five, then do six, and taper those. And you're just trying to get sort of a proportionally pleasing splice. And I'd count the first one, so one, two, three, and four. Um, there's seven wires in this strand, and so what I'm going to do is take out two, take out two, and then take out three, and that's how I taper this. Uh, and this little wire tree sculpture is just going to get increasingly more difficult to keep track of. But So we just do that and tuck once more, and then we do another two out of there. And you just have to make sure that they don't get stuck on the wrong side, but that's fine. That goes up in there like that. Uh, and that strand is done. So we didn't have to pull the spike out at all. We just ran that one right up through there and that was that. Now this one, the core sort of interferes with a little bit. So we'll, you'll see we'll have to jump over the core at a certain point here. And I can just tell that's a little tight and I want a little bit more of this. To keep track of where you are, you, can, you don't really want to jam the spike in way down low, but you can always sort of get the tip in there. I'm actually going to get this one up here, but the core is sort of up in my business there, so it actually looks like it's going to push back out. That's not really a problem. Um, so this one, a lot of times with strand number two, you got to sort of encourage it to go off in the right direction. So I'm actually, this is just called breaking the lay, and I'm just going to open that up a little bit so that as it, as it goes there, you can see it sort of split open a little bit. That's what you want it to do. So we'll get this tucked up in there and see how it's kind of opening up. I'm just going to manipulate that around with my spike and get that down in there. And that's nice, just like that. And on we go. So that's two. I'm going to do this one five. Three. Five here, so we're one up 
from the one before, and there it is. You know, you don't want it to look like a piece of wire sticking out the side. You want it to sort of just look like a fatter strand. And now I'm just going to taper this again. I'm going to pull two wires out, unlay them, run it down in there, and tuck this again. Um, and this is where the length of your tail that you left for splicing really has the most effect because if you left it too long you're going to have a lot of these wires um, and if you left it too short they're going to be kind of stubby and you're going to spike yourself like crazy and you're also going to fight with the ends the little tips it's hard to get them in especially with a bigger wire now here's one thing we should just look at i took my two off i want to run my three but this is on top of it so i've got to split these in half and that will allow this last tuck to lay in a little more fairly like that. See, that's going to lay in there nice now. So I'll just run this up and do that. Run that down like that. So that's two done. Now these ones you have to be a little careful about. Sometimes, especially with a thimble in here, they can push some slack back when you do this next tuck. And what you don't want is you want all the strands going around to be bearing up uh, nice and evenly. So every once in a while, if there's something isn't quite right here, you got to clamp this with a pair of vice grips to keep that thing from pushing back. But we'll get this started and see what it looks like. Now this one you can see here, the core is right in there now. And as I run this spike up, it's going to start pushing that core in, which is fine for the first couple tucks. And then I'm going to jump it over and pull the core out because I don't want to push too much core in as I get up into the top of my splice. So I'm just going to pick this strand right here and see how that feels. And this feels fine. You can. This strand is pulling in nicely. Now this one, especially as well, I gotta break that, break that lay so that it's gonna do what I want it to do. And I think I may, just because, just to show you guys, you can you can save yourself a lot of strife sometimes. You don't want to like really beat the wire up, but it's just like a clamp. I'm just gonna put that on there. That's gonna keep that strand from pushing around at all. So I'll go up like this. And I'm going to lay that in there like that, and that's going to be sweet. And what I'm going to do right now is actually jump my core and pull it out of the way. And I pull this down, and I just sort of kink it and drive the spike over it. And that keeps it out of the way. And now I can just carry on tucking. And this one I'm going to go six with. Oop, nice. Get these out of the way. And I just so happen to know that that's where we want to be. Okay, take two. Like that. And getting this out of here. And everybody sort of tapers a little differently. I don't know. This is how I've always done it, and it's always worked. Um, <clears throat> it is worth noting that in a properly done splice, the weakest part of the whole splice is the transition from the single wire to the spliced wire. You would think it might be down here in the crotch, which if you do a bad job and you really work them around, yes, that's the weakest link. But there's twice as much metal right here as there is right here. So you got a little bit of leeway there. And what, what, where the splice wants to break is where it's first deformed from its, from its standard. And so the smoother the taper is, the less likely that is. So it's, it's worth focusing on getting a nice smooth transition. You know, some people will just run them and just cut them off sequentially. Um, but I think it's worth making this little wire tree. There we go, we just got one more tuck here. We'll just run this up through here. And get that caught in there. And that looks pretty good like that. So we're halfway there, working our way around, and we're just going to carry on. One doesn't need to be broken because the way it enters at first, it sort of naturally breaks. A little interference on the core there. Get that locked in there real nice. Keep running up. I think probably just one more on here is plenty. And it's it's not for everybody. It's a fun, I don't know what part of the brain it is that makes this really click for some people, and for other people it can be so hard. It was not an easy thing for me to learn how to do. 
um, I spent a long time wrestling with the wire. And I've taught some people who just pick it up instantly. And it's frustrating because, <laughs> well, geez, it wasn't like that for me. But um, <clears throat> anyway, so there we got four in there. There's two left to do. When I was learning how to do this, the thing I had the most difficulty with actually wasn't necessarily keeping track of everything, but getting that feel uh, to get the wires to open up and lay down right. You want to try to be gentle with the wire, trying to deform it as little as possible. The spike, if you look at it here, is at sort of a nice angle riding up. It's just tucked under the wire. You don't want to find yourself running the spike with it way down here like this, because you really can't actually just lever that thing over and deform the wire. So you're just, you're just trying to work with it the best as you can. And, uh, you know, do like 40 of them. And then <laughs> so we'll try to persevere here and finish this one up. So far it's looking pretty good. Um, and a, a, another thing that's worth mentioning too is that not all wire is the same. Uh, I always work, mostly work with the wire from the same company, which I like and I know how it works, uh, but some wire is laid up tighter than others. Sometimes when you serve it, like if you serve around the eye, that can sort of change uh, the balance between the strands and the core, which can affect the way the splice goes. Uh, so there's a lot of variables, and, uh, and again, a lot of it is by feel, but hopefully just seeing the process, even if we can't keep total track of, of all the different uh, things going on, that'll give us, give us some idea of what, what we're trying to accomplish. Got one more tuck here, and then I'll taper this. And we'll finish it up on the other side there. So, split these out. Split this in half. Mm -hmm. All right, we're on to the last strand. That always feels good when we get down to the last one. So again, we're just looking at this last one because I'm trying to figure out where to pick up which you can always go back down to the beginning, but you can just sort of see this one on either side here. They sort of look like they're double the thickness, they're bigger, uh, because they've actually had a strand wrapped around them. Um, and if you do a good job, they look very much just like a bigger strand of the same wire. But if you just look uh, close in here, this, this one hasn't been done yet. So that's the one that we're gonna go for when we pick up. Just keeping track of those is a difficult thing to do as you go up through it. Working sequentially around helps. They always go around the one to their left. So you can see it right here. This is the last one to tuck, and there's the one that we're tucking around. It's gonna go around the one immediately to its left. And all the strands are the same, even if they're sort of coming out in different places as you go. They always go around the one to their left. So I'll pick this up right now and get the spike in here. Another thing you gotta watch out for, I almost did it right there. See, you can just sort of see I'm picking up a piece of the core in there you don't want to do that now i'm not but if you're not careful there it is see that i've got a little i can hear it that that's a piece of the core so i'm going to stay away from that and i'm going to get my spike in nice and clean we'll tuck this we'll just get this tuck right in here um i'll get this through and you can see how it's untwisting nicely and now i'm going to lay that in that tuck is just going to see how it almost disappears right there that's really sweet that's what it wants to do so that's, you know, that's it. That's pretty much textbook right there. As you add all this material, you're actually shortening up the wire ever so slightly, and the core in the middle kind of wants to stay straight. Um, so you have to be careful. Sometimes it kind of wants to get pushed out the side. It's not happening right now, which is good. Um, but you kind of got to watch out for that. I got one or two more tucks to do in that guy. And that'll finish the splice, and then we'll I'll show you how I finish the core. That's the last thing to do before we take it out of the vise uh, and tap it down. So I'm gonna go one. Yeah, this one I want to go six tucks with. I'll just go one more here. Why not? Get this in here like that. Split this open. Yeah, it just sort of looks like a rat's nest. Wire. You can sort of see it there as it comes down and close. It's harder with the, the deformed strand, as I split the strands out, you know. Oof. All right. So, 
do this. The final tuck always feels good. Real good. I'll just get this in here like this. Split that down like that. And yeah, that's another thing I should have maybe pointed out more. Is after you do the tuck, when the tuck is in there, and this is the last one here, but you always want to run the spike back up about a half a turn because it locks it back in place. If you pull it out while the strand is right there, the strand could get loose. Um, and so you always want to roll your spike back up uh, before you pull it out like that. Um, so that's got all the trans strands in there. And now we've got the core right here, which is just sort of sticking out the side. This is the core of our working end that's just been jammed in there. And some people taper this out. It might not be a bad idea. I never have. I'm just going to cut it off and then I'm going to bury it in there. Uh, and to bury this in here, I'm just going to come around and I'm going to pick up the strand in front of it. And you can really get a sense here of how the wire is spliced because I'm picking up a strand that I've already tucked. This is just two wires tucked together. They're all twisted up and I can run the spike up just as if it was a piece of wire. It's just, and I just am pushing that core inside. And so there, it's all gone. That's the splice right there. So I'll take my unlaying stick out. I'm all done with that. Um, that can actually stay up there. This guy will just pop off of here and that can probably all stay hooked up. We'll hold this like this, we'll pull this all down. You can use a brass hammer, you don't really want to use a steel hammer. I just use a piece of hardwood on the end of a hardwood block like this. You just try to tap it and it sort of fares. You want to work from the entrance up towards the uh, taper. But you can just see, you know, it's just sort of like smoothing everything together. Um, and you can see here at the entrance that things look pretty nice and pretty even and not too disturbed. I mean, that's all those wires are running in real fluid like. Um, and that's, it looks like they're all going to draw up even. So that's exactly what you want, just like that. You don't want to see one sort of bulging out the side because you know that that's not going to be doing anything. So we'll just keep tapping this. And I notice I'm working with the lay and I'll work right up through my taper because the tape, it really fares the taper out even more than anything else. If you find yourself really beating your splice to death, you've kind of done something wrong. So I'm not hitting it too hard. I'm just sort of working it like that. And honestly, I mean, I think that's pretty good. I don't see much more room for improvement. So when I put it back in, I actually put the thimble in upside down to let the crotch of the splice stay open a little bit like that, which will help me when I go to serve this up. Pull this up. Yeah, it just locks in, you know, it just jams into the part of the block. Um, and we can pull these back sort of down like this. So different people do this different ways. You know, stainless needs some oxygen to be stainless. It has an oxide coating on it. And I don't know all the ins and outs of this, but some people will say you shouldn't serve over your stainless wire at all because it prohibits the oxygen from getting in there and it can corrode in there, which is sort of true if water gets in there. But if you do a good job with all your surface and everything, well, no water is getting in. I, I, I've always served over the splices. Um, if you serve over it, you can just snip these wires off and they don't stick out too far to stick through the service. I get in there with my flush cut nippers and I just nip them off, you know, in flush. And those are, those are pretty flush. And I've never seen, especially with the 316 wire, uh, corrosion issues, unless something was really poorly done. So I think the flush cut, the flush cut nippers are my, my tool of preference. Yeah, that's the seven by seven wire splice. What we'll do now is parcel this and serve it over and uh, that'll finish it off.